Welcome back, everyone, for our sadly last lecture. I know. We wanted today, though, to be special for a number of reasons. We wanted to make sure that you understood that while this is getting close to the end of our content for this year, that there are a lot of opportunities available to you after CS50. So we've brought in three faculty to talk to you about some of the possible options that you have after completing CS50 at Yale. So let me introduce each of them without delay. Uh, first, Kyle Jensen, who's going to talk to you about introductions to entrepreneurship. Yes, thank you. Thank you. No, don't stop. Come on. Uh, my name is Kyle Jensen. I'm one of the associate deans at the School of Management, and I teach this class. Programming and entrepreneurship. Uh, you have now a skill set that allows you to reach millions of people by scaling yourself very well, by using computers to create products and services that solve real problems for real people to make their lives better. That can be um, serious things like helping people find capital, like Kickstarter. That can be 
ridiculous things like helping people be less lonely, like Tinder, right? Uh, these are fundamentally things that make people's lives better. Uh, and you can create those, giving the skill sets that you developed here in CS50. This class is all about that. We teach about lean startup. We teach about evidence-based entrepreneurship. We teach you how to scale a business from zero to something, or from zero to one, for example. And it's a fantastic time. We have a great teaching staff for next semester, and we'll work with you in the development of a business to articulate hypotheses about problems that you can solve, apps that you can build, and uh, we'll work with you engineering that into an application uh, by the end of the semester. It's a tremendously fun course. I think you should take the course. Uh, we'll hopefully have a, a great room, and it'll be very practice-based, so which is to say you won't listen to me lecture a lot, although that is a very engaging thing. Uh, we will instead work together in the development of your application and the challenging of hypotheses around your business. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're interested in, for example, taking what you've learned here and turning it into a company, into a startup, into an app, into a, something that improves the lives of other people, you should take this course. It's Programming and Entrepreneurship. It's CPSC 113. And again, my name is Kyle Jensen. And you can find me easily online and ask me any other questions that you have. Thank you. We've also been working really hard to make sure that the existing curricular content in computer science is also something that you can step up to and for it to be accessible to you. Uh, Stephen Slade is here to talk about one of the new initiatives we have to give you a bridge course between CS50 and the rest of the department. Uh, so I'm teaching two courses next semester, six, uh, Computer Science 200 and 201. 201 is an existing course, 200 is a new course, and one way to view them is one is practice and one is theory, but you can actually take both. A professor was lecturing to a class, and in the middle of the lecture, a genie appeared in a great puff of smoke. The genie confronted the professor and said, you, have, you can choose one of three wishes. You can have unlimited happiness, unlimited wealth, or unlimited wisdom. But you can only choose one. What do you choose? Well, he was a professor, right? So he chose wisdom. There's another puff of smoke. The genie disappears. And the professor's standing alone at the front of the class and there's like an aura around his head. Finally, one of the students says, Professor, what can you tell us? The professor looks out among the assembled students and says, I should have taken the money. <laughs> the point of my being here is you don't have to make that choice. You can do both. <laughs> Computer science will offer you wisdom and as Professor Jensen indicated, there you can make the world and yourself a better place. <laughs> These two courses have things in common, and in particular, the, the things they have in common allow you to pursue higher level computer science courses. They will teach you recursion, they will teach you Unix, and they will teach you computer architecture. Okay? However, they also differ. They differ in the languages that they focus on. Computer Science 200 focuses on Python and R, which are generally more practical languages. Computer Science 201 is taught in Racket, which is a dialect of Scheme, which is a version of Lisp, which is a more theoretical language. It's the traditional language, actually, for artificial intelligence work. Although it's not without practical applications, Google uses Lisp for its travel site. Uh, because they bought a company that had developed all the, the travel software using Lisp, and Google said, go ahead, keep up the good work. But in general, Python and R are the more practical real-world languages, whereas Racket, Scheme, Lisp are more theoretical. The topics that are central to CS200 that are not part of 201 include software engineering, version control networks, object-oriented programming, security, privacy, regulation,
data science and machine learning. And again, each of these topics are th things that have effects in the real world. In 201, it's more theoretical. We talk about Turing machines, Boolean logic, gates and circuits, formal languages, finite state automata, and computational complexity. These provide the theoretical foundations for further studies of computer science. Uh, who am I? I am kind of a hybrid of practical and academic. So I was a Yale undergraduate, but I majored in music. But I came back and I did uh, my graduate work here in computer science. I've written three books. I was involved in presidential politics, which may or may not be the real world, but I worked at the White House and I developed computer systems for campaigns and for the White House. Uh, I was also on the faculty at the NYU Business School and from there I started working on Wall Street. I worked at Morgan Stanley and a uh, number of other companies in, for financial applications. This semester I've been teaching a course in automated decision systems, which also uses R and Python, but for uh, more practical applications. Any questions? If you have questions, you can contact me uh, afterwards. You can send me email or, or arrange to come and see me. Thank you very much. And finally, one of the things that's really unique about Yale is the connection that computer science has to the rest of the university. One of our very uh, forward-looking programs is the Computing in the Arts major, which is almost unique here. Almost nowhere else does this exist. And to, to explain that and some other options, Professor Holly Rushmeyer. Hi. So the, uh, the departments and disciplines that are defined normally, are in some ways, are kind of arbitrary. They're the silos, like this is the computing stuff, this is the music stuff, this is the theater stuff. There's legitimate things that people want to pursue that involve ideas and methods that actually come from multiple of these silos that have grown up in academics. And the competing in the arts major is, is developed to, to allow people to sort of break out of those silos and develop these uh, and work in these other areas. So it's intercompartmental. It's, uh, it involves courses taught by people in different departments, computer science and the various arts disciplines. And so it allows you to, do, to pursue ideas and methods that some people may say belong in different silos, but in, in, from another point of view are part of one area of inquiry. So, oh, uh, procedurally, the, 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 the major involves taking six uh, courses from the computer science department, which include three of the course, courses from the computer science major. And then it's not just um, arts in general. It's not about taking the 100 level in multiple arts things. It's about getting serious depth in one of the other arts, whether it's art, history of art, music, theater studies or architecture, and you would have six courses from whichever art track you chose. And then after each, each of those sets of six courses, in your, in your senior year, you have a two-term senior project that combines uh, the, the, the two tracks. In the area of art, what might you be interested in? It's about uh, you know, uh, exploring and defining and inventing new uh, algorithms, methods, techniques in the arts. It may be in the more commercial arts like the Disney kind of animation. It may be more in the fine arts. It may be uh, computational techniques that produce more traditional media. So it could be new media and developing new media, or it may be applying computation to traditional painting and sculpture. In, the, in art history, the, uh, the, the area that I get uh, most involved in, it may be uh, new, uh, developing new techniques for documentation or uh, either 2D or 3D scanning, new, new ways of assembling data about art, and then the whole process of ex exploring uh, new, new software and algorithms for extracting information from, the, from that data. And then it can go in many different directions. It may be the actual conservation of physical artifacts. It may be interpreting uh, 
various observations from different media uh, to answer questions in, in the humanities. Why did this happen? What did these people have in common? Or it may be to do public communication of, the, uh, of, of, of history and the arts to the public. In music, there's the, there's the composition and performance side that, that you may uh, explore computational techniques, or it could be the analysis side. What makes a Bach chorale sound like a Bach chorale? So there's a whole, the whole range of performance, uh, composition, and analysis in music. Theater studies is wide open. It's even what is theater? Are computer games theater? Or are there new ways of creating performances? Or could it be computational techniques for traditional lighting design in theater? Or just the general idea of storytelling? And architecture, which is a new track that we're just bringing on uh, this year, it's about uh, new techniques for design, whether it be in the physical world, in the virtual world. Uh, you know, we, we now things like AutoCAD and stuff are have become the old tradition. We want to look at breaking out of those kinds of computer solid modeling into new kinds of freer uh, computational techniques that that don't impose the computer on the on the design process. What, what happens to people who are in this major people? Uh, many worried parents actually are the ones who ask this question. And there's a huge range of possibilities that our students go into. Every software company needs people with this kind of, uh, of, 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 of background because when you're looking, everybody in the world now is a computer user. And if you look at the whole system, the, uh, the part where you have the people using the computers, the arts is what is the best place to look for informing that, that aspect of computing. Or it could be in media companies, places like Disney that you know, obviously are, are deeply entrenched in, in the arts, or it could be in, in cultural heritage in the museum sector. And of course, we have some people who do the major and then go work for finance and consulting companies. There's, there's a whole range of things that people can do. Um, I'm Holly Rushmeyer. I'm a professor in the computer science department. You, anytime my door's open, feel free to come and talk to me about it. The director of undergraduate studies for the major is Julie Dorsey, also in computer science, and she would be pleased to meet with you and answer any questions. Well, thanks, Holly. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Without further ado, for the last time this semester, I get to give you David Malin. To beat. All right, this is CS50, and this is 
the end of week 11. So we do hope, um, particularly coming on the heels of quiz one, that all of you are relieved, but also proud of just how far you've come. Indeed, so many of you, 72%, if last year is any reflection, have, have had no prior experience taking a computer science course before. And so even if you were feeling a little less than excited as to how quiz zero or one or some particular piece that turned out, just consider the delta from uh, today versus week zero. Indeed, this, recall, is pretty much where we start. And for many of you, just getting those darn for loops to work may have been an initial challenge. And I would encourage you at some point, if you'd like some self-assigned homework, go back and re-implement Mario, whether it's in JavaScript or PHP or even in C, and see just how hopefully how readily uh, that kind of logic now comes to you. Today, we wrap up the course here in New Haven, and we give you a sense of what still is on the horizon, even outside of the classroom. First and foremost is the CS50 Hackathon, uh, an epic all-nighter during which you and your classmates in Cambridge will have an opportunity to dive into and continue, not hopefully start, final projects uh, for some 12 hours, arriving around 7 p.m. by buses that will provide here from New Haven to Cambridge. Around 9 p.m. will serve first dinner, around 1 a.m. will serve second dinner, and around 5 a.m. will serve breakfast for those who are still standing. And you'll see such memories as these while working through the evening, candy, and as promised in week zero, vegetables for the second time in history, as well as uh, 4 a.m. things start to look a little like this. And then beyond that, realize now what's ahead is the CS50 Fair here at Yale, so that faculty and students and staff from across this campus have an opportunity to delight in exactly how much you all pulled off this semester. Will there be in commons the CS50 Fair on Monday the 14th? Um, so do keep that in mind and more to come with details, uh, that, uh, details online. Uh, but if uh, in Cambridge is any indication, realize that memories like this here await. And you should certainly feel free to invite your friends in the meantime. And if seeing you at the CS50 Fair weren't incentive enough, uh, we thought we would invite some of our friends from industry. So if you'd like to chat up uh, alumni and recruiters from eBay, ESPN, Facebook, Google, Palantir, YEI, and YHAC, um, and possibly more, do come by. And if that's not enough to come see you or the recruiters from industry, realize that there will be a raffle with fabulous prizes, among them these. And what the, will happen is upon arriving at the fair, both you and attendees will be handed a little program for the day's event, telling you what to do and what is there. Uh, there will be some little placeholders for smiley face stickers and all of you, the students, will get some 10 plus smiley face stickers. And anyone who breaks that social awkwardness and comes up to you and says, what did you do? Or can I see a demo of what you did? You hand them a sticker, and that sticker is an entry in a fabulous raffle uh, such as this here. So that should help you break the ice and give everyone a little bit of an excuse to uh, grease those wheels. And you'll see such expressions and memories as this one here, this one here, and then proudly will all of you have your first ever iTook CS50 t-shirts as well. So more on that to come. Now in addition to the courses very specifically offered today as to what's on the horizon, realize too that among the handouts, thanks to Megan, is um, Yale's first ever unofficial guide to CS at Yale, where she's wonderfully diagrammed um, the very various paths that you can take after leaving CS50 or 112 or other courses here at Yale so that you can explore things well beyond CS50 itself if you would like. And the diagram you'll see there is exactly that. And also, too, realize that today from 3 to 4.30 PM is the first ever CS50 Expo here at Yale um, over in Sterling Memorial Library. And this is an opportunity to see some of the projects that are on teaching staff that some of the upperclassmen here have created in their classes, in their research projects, in entrepreneurial interests of theirs. So do join us there for snacks and some Amazing, uh, amazing opportunities and glimpses as what you can now do as an aspiring computer scientist. And in terms of opportunities now with CS50 itself to get involved, um, do realize, if unfamiliar, that in addition to this co uh, college offering of CS50, the College Board, uh, which you may recall fondly or less fondly, is in the process of standing up a new AP computer science curriculum. So some of you, a few of you, might have taken AP CSA, uh, Computer Science A, which focused, frankly, very much on the language Java, sort of to the exclusion of inspiration quite often and excitement and problem solving more generally. What's really nice about a new curriculum for framework that's being released in fall 2016 from the College Board is that it will be AP Computer Science Principles, which is much more akin to a more uh, inspiring CS0, CS1, CS2 course, as most universities might call them. And there will be a number of implementations of this course. Um, UC Berkeley is doing one, Code.org is doing one, CS50 is doing one. And so if you have an interest in getting involved in high school education and working with CS50 and the staff capacity doing reach outreach like this, uh, do reach out to us as well. Any of the course's heads. And also, too, now begins recruiting. You are all just about to be uh, eligible to teach this same class here at Yale. And what's been especially, frankly, exciting 
um, amazing this past year is that truly with CS50 have we had a team of some 44 undergrad, largely undergraduate staff members who are serving as undergraduate learning assistants or TAs more generally for the first time in Yale's history. And so you will be the second generation of exactly that opportunity. So we do encourage you to apply either as a TA or a CA in the, um, in the teaching role or in a number of other uh, roles. Suffice it to say, with all of the songs and dances, literally, that we seem to have, um, there's any number of ways where you can get involved creatively, artistically, as well as educationally. So do let us know via this URL here. Now, a little while from now, we'll adjourn with our tradition, just as we began the semester with cake in the dining hall around the corner. But we'd like to tie up a few loose ends. And first and foremost, I'd just like to recognize one. <laughs> this happened last week. Um, so I've become acquainted with Overhaired at Yale, where if we, uh, shall we say, enhance this video or this photo, you'll see this shirt that I was sold for $15. And then, <laughs> then uh, this photo was taken. Um, business, I'm told, has been good ever since then. Uh, didn't go over super well back home. Um, but uh, irrespective of how this weekend goes, and actually, one other, thanks to the Stilo. So we made the rumpus today at CS50. Um, the hookup bingo chart, which is on the back, uh, involves CS50. I don't really want my words to show up in the transcript. So I'll just, OK, here we go. OK, so that's one of the squares. <laughs> Won't be able to search on that word, though. All right. Um, so irrespective of how this particular weekend turns out with Harvard Yale, do know it's been an absolute honor for us and so terribly exciting to be working with SCAS, with Jason, with Andy, with the entire team here. Um, Yale versus Harvard. We're still working on that, apparently. Um, <laughs> Um, it really has been special. And as I've said before, of all the universities to collaborate with in this way, it's truly been special for us to work here with the team and the students at Yale. So it's been wonderfully gratifying, and we are forever grateful for this opportunity to be welcomed as we have been here. Um, indeed, let me say some thank yous first before we turn things over to some of you and some audience participation. First and foremost, to Skaz, to Jason, to Andy, and the entire Yale team, thank you for making this course so amazing here. <laughs> I'd like to uh, draw your attention to all of the names that compose CS50's team, both here and in New Haven. Over 100 of us uh, colleagues on in, in both of these towns. And so we won't spend time, I fear, on every one of the names. I did want to draw your attention to one fellow in particular for a couple of reasons. Pictured here is teaching fellow Alex, um, who apparently shortly before he took four pairs of CS50 shades from a recent event. Um, but Alex has been an amazing character to have on staff. He was, shall we say, not the greatest supporters of CS50 coming to Yale just over a year ago. But he's turned into this extraordinary member of our teaching staff, an extraordinary senior in computer science, and, 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 and most importantly, number one atop CS50's big board this year. So congratulations to Alex as well here. OK. <laughs> Fun fact, so with Rob Bowden back home, do, uh, do he and I um, run the big board this past year. And so Rob was so annoyed that Alex had bested him that we even did a, a random audit of Alex's code to make sure that it was consistent with the problem set specification. And indeed, he bested Andrew and Rob here in this year's big board. So congrats to him as well. Um, some quick thank yous to the team back home, Davin and Maria and ha uh, Hannah and Rob, whom we'll soon see. And also a number of the full-time members who work largely back home behind the scenes, Doug, who heads up our CS50 AP program. Dan Armendariz, who with our friends at Cloud9, took to the next level our use of CS50 IDE this year. Colton, of course, with whom we've started music most every day. Elise, who is literally in the same pose right now, back in the uh, cabinet up there, up top. Um, and then Dan Coffey from our production team, uh, Scully from our production team, um, Ian, Ramon, Jordan, and of course, a very familiar face that quite humorously see um, in exactly this pose or exactly this context, both in Cambridge and now here in New Haven, our own Zamila, whom if we enhance, <laughs> looks more like this on most every laptop at office hours most every night. And in fact, not all of the staff, of course, could be here today. But I thought what we'd do is dim the lights for a moment and allow the staff, both from New Haven and Cambridge, to offer some words of their own. There is no other course in which everyone who works for the course is as excited to be there and like be involved in it as CS50. I don't know, it's like this really like important and special responsibility um, and like kind of an incredible experience and I'm really glad I get to be a part of people's education. CS50, in my opinion, is amazing. I love it. Um, I loved it when I was taking the class and I love it even more as a TF. CFing is a lot of work, but it's really rewarding because you get to teach so much. You really get to know your students, you get to know the material yourself. 
and you get to just watch them become computer scientists. My students are the highlight of my my semester. So This is CS50. I've just never felt as, as much like a leader on campus um, as I have this semester. This is one of the only opportunities uh, on Yale's campus to really get uh, like invested in teaching. It's really cool to see CS50 from the other side. I was surprised at how excited all the students were. And it's also nice when like people like recover like a picture of Rick Astley yeah. and are like, who is that? Yeah, I wanted to give back because I got a lot of support when I was a student. All you need is enthusiasm and um, a love of teaching or CS or any of the above, and you'll be able to do it. All my, all my students keep rickrolling me. It's been so much fun to like teach about this thing that I like really love and think is a lot of fun and like try to get other people excited about it as well. I'm Analia Ernst and this is CS50. So you may recall that we began the semester looking at computational thinking and solving problems more efficiently while thinking a bit more like a computer. And rather than rehash something like peanut butter and jelly, recall that we had the phone book here. We solved such problems as problem sets on game of 15. But we thought we'd try something a little new here, whereby we see just to what extent this idea of thinking computationally has sunk in, whereby we thought we'd try to offer up in the form of a volunteer some instructions and see how well we can all follow them. And for this, I need at least one volunteer, if you might be. I see someone being tapped on the shoulder right there. Does that qualify? No? No? All right. Uh, how about, OK, in the green, come on back. Come on over. So let's go ahead and do this. I have uh, some notes up here that we'll work on together. And what is your name? Erica. Erica? All right. Let me give you this, Erica. Nice to meet you. Okay. All right, so in just a moment, um, you all should have a blank piece of paper. If you don't, just scrounge around and see if you can grab one and find a pen or whatnot. And we're going to try something like this. If you are comfortable doing so, Erica, I need you to describe what you see on this opaque piece of paper <laughs> so that the audience here is only going to do literally what you say by following your instructions. And then in just a moment, I'll come around and take a random sampling of some pictures, and we'll see just how accurately your classmates have done. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so you at this point as the audience should have a blank piece of paper, a pen or pencil, and you should do exactly what Erica says. Go. Okay. Landscape orientation. In the center of both the uh, vertical and horizontal axis of the page, draw a square, not a rectangle, even sides about one inch on each side with the center of the square in the center of the paper. Directly above, thinking landscape orientation, above that square, but touching it, you should have a circle with the same radius as half of the side of the square. So the circle should be able to fit inside the square and be just touching the top of the middle, the middle of the top side of the square. <laughs> and then directly below the square, you should have an equilateral triangle with um, the one top um, point touching the bottom of the square and then equilateral. All right, so that was extraordinarily precise. Let me leave you here for just a moment and see if we can get a couple of answers. Can I grab yours? OK, grab yours, yours. Now I'm going to fish for one that oh, is very good. <laughs> You're all very good at this. Um, oh, can I take this one? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> we'll randomize. <laughs> um, 
Can I take yours too? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, that's a compliment. Okay. Uh, yes. Very good. Can I? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. All right. And just so I don't neglect anyone over here, that's very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's adorable. <laughs> All right, that's enough for this one. So let's see how we did here. All right, so why don't we go ahead now and I will spoil, with Erica still here,、uh, what the image was supposed to be. Wonderfully precisely described, I would argue. Now let me go ahead and take a look at a random sample of the pictures that we found up here. So let's go. The first several I found were、uh, here's one. So very.、Uh, Nicely done.、Uh, here's another. Very nicely done. Here's another. And this is where it was getting awkward because there there's like 50 or 100 of these out there. But then, then I kept searching and we found this. So the orientation wasn't quite right.、Uh, we now have another correct one. We had this one. All right, so not quite right.、Um, Then there's this one, maybe not quite to scale. <laughs> And then the adorable one, if I may. Very nicely done.、The、congratulations to Erica for doing such a good job. Thank you. Why don't we get,、uh, can we get one more volunteer to come on up and do the same? Come on up. Yeah. And I'm sorry for taking the papers from everyone. If you can try to scrounge one other piece, we'll do this once more in this direction. What is your name? Adam. Adam, come on up. All right, so the task is going to be very similar, different picture.、Right. Nice to meet you. Come around. All, around. All right, and we're going to do this again, this time with a different picture from Adam. Adam is going to describe to you,、oh, wow. opaquely, so confident, the following. The floor is yours. It is a very large square. Can I, can I say that? Yes, that's、okay. good. That's correct. <laughs>、uh, but, like, very large, like, But start of the center, like it's from the center, but like expands outward from the center. So, like, the center of the page is still the center, so keep that in mind.、Uh, <laughs> then、uh, divide it in half,、uh, but like in the center going hot dog style. Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> so then divide it that way, like up and down,、uh, vertical, vertical.、Um, and then from the vertical line, Uh, going from the right side of the center of that vertical line, go to the right to divide that rectangle on the right side in half. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, but now it's going to get a little tricky, so let's hold on here.、Uh, you're going to do that again, but going up from that. So, you have, so now you, you should have a rectangle, a big rectangle, and two small squares on the other side. And then divide your square in the top right in half. The same way you divided the big square at the beginning. Okay, okay. And now, <laughs> now, so now you have that square that's divided into two rectangles. And then draw that same line you drew at the beginning from the center point of the original square with that line in the center to, to the far, this, to the horizontally from that new up and down line. <laughs> and then recreate that square again in the top or right hand quadrant. I mean, not the quadrant, the, what's, whatever the eighth is of a quadrant. I, I'm going to go start getting the sheets. Yes, okay. okay. <laughs> so if there's any questions, I can take those now. <laughs> can I see just a few examples? All right, we got this one here. All right, this one here. All right, still working. That's very nice.、Uh, yes. I'm not good at this Thank class. Thank you.、Uh, yeah, then I. Okay, and let me we'll take these two. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and one more from over here. One more from over here. Thank you. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. All right. So, Adam, let's see how、uh, they did. And、uh, let's reveal. I'll reveal on the screen what the image was this time. So, what we were looking for this time, per Adam's precise instructions, was this. <laughs> and what we got was. Some works of beauty here, I will say.、Oh. Wow. I, wow. <laughs> You're surprised? <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs>、um, then、so、then 
<laughs> and then this is maybe my favorite. This one's just a little skewed. That one's not my fault. That one's not my fault. <laughs> well, all right, thank you and congrats to Adam for being so thank precise. You. Thank you. So why don't we try this at least one more time, but kind of flip things around. So now we need someone who's comfortable drawing and having a hundred of your classmates staring down at your back while you draw, taking instructions from your classmates. Okay, how about in purple? Come on up. All right. So in a moment, what's your name? Angela. Angela, come on up, Angela. So Angela's going to stand roughly here where she shouldn't be able to see the overhead. She can only see the boards. Nice to meet you, Angela. Here's your piece of chalk. I'm going to show the audience the picture. And then roughly orderly, kind of like the PBJ, we'll have you guys shout out linearly exactly what you would like Angela to draw. Sound good? Good. <laughs> yeah. Would someone like to offer an instruction to Angela? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> well, OK. Circle? All right, I heard circle at the top of the board. OK, I heard it's a stick figure. And here, you want to hold this in the other hand? OK, next. Cir right. Draw a circle in the center of the board. It's a stick figure. Stop, stop, stop. Only keep the body. So it's like a lollipop? <laughs> Add the two legs first. Down here. OK, I heard yeah. So the here? arm starts from the body toward the head. <laughs> like that? <laughs> what? OK. Here, how about this? One arm goes up. The right arm has, I heard the right arm has his arm on his hip. His right his arm? His right. <laughs> like that? Yes. What else? The other, the other arm goes up. Oh, like that? <laughs> All right, and? He's saying something. <laughs> Like a speech bubble? <laughs> There's a line approximately 10 blocks that goes out from the head. There's a line at 10 o'clock that we can draw like from the radius projecting. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> There's a line at uh, 10 o'clock from the head out. Do what you did originally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right? Hi. He says hi. What do we think? All right. Congratulations. If you'd like to take a look, you indeed got it. Very nicely done. So we've not tried this last opportunity before, before we adjourn for cake, but we thought we'd try to get all the more of you involved versus some of the staff as well. And so if I could, are there five staff members who would like to volunteer and come on over here? Stelios, do you want to bring four friends on down? From the staff, come on down. Yep, Andy. Yep, come on down. And if you guys would like to organize yourselves in a line behind this blue table, now we need five student volunteers. OK, so how about you two sitting there? Uh, three, four in the middle. Oh, and over here, five on the end. Come on up. Yep, you on the end. Yes, come on down. And students shall be over here. And did we lose some? One, two, three, four. I pointed at someone who's still. Yes, you. You come on down. All right. So we'll explain the rules here if you've not heard of this before, but it sounds a little something like. Okay. So as soon as it's done, okay, you'll have to change, hit escape and then change to the browser. <laughs> Oh, okay. So here we have family, Colton, 
<laughs> website. OK, so here we have Family Feud. And now you'll have to forgive, you may recall that in problem set eight, we asked you a number of quiz review questions that are kind of sort of in the form of Jeopardy questions, even though it was question and answer. We decided after issuing P set eight that we want to play Family Feud instead. So we've taken some liberties how to convert Jeopardy questions to Family Feud, but the following data may or may not be reflective of correct answers. So, with that said, the way this is going to work is that we have the student team here, we have the staff team here. We're going to first have two members of the staff and students face off. I'm going to ask a question, and the first one to buzz in with this here that was easy. easy button, which is the only red buttons we could find. And according to the guy at Staples, he has never seen someone actually buy the easy button in Staples.、Um, that will be how the two people buzz in. Whoever buzzes in first not only gets a certain number of points, they also get control of the board. The goal then, if the students, for instance, win that toss, you guys have to come up with the top several answers before getting three strikes by guessing wrong. And I'll re explain this as we go. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and begin as follows. Where, let's, what's your name? Vlad. Vlad, all right.、Yeah. Nice to meet you. And introduce yourself to the team. Treyas. Treyas. So here we have、uh, two easy buttons, one question, and the following will be revealed now by Colton a function declared in standardio.h. That was easy. <laughs> you hit it first, so we'll go with the staff. Printf. Show us printf. Very nice. So now the staff has control of the board. Oh, and if we're going to keep score, we need someone who's really good at arithmetic under pressure. Really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> OK, I、okay, saw、so、your hand first. Come on down. What's your name? Dylan. Oh, Dylan. All right, Dylan. Nice to meet you. So if you could grab a piece of chalk and to the left and the right of the stick figure, keep track accurately of the following arithmetic. The staff now have 68 points. All right. So, next question specifically for Andy is the same. Andy, what is a function declared in standardio.h?、Uh, scanf. Colton, show us scanf. Very nice. So, an additional 12 points for the staff team. Stelios, same question. A function declared in standardio.h. Just Stelios, please.、Um, put C. Put C. Show us put C. <laughs> One strike. Only two remain. Staff, a function declared in standardio.h. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it might be in there,、exactly. but these are only the top six answers. Key detail. That doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means it's not among the six answers. It's foreign. So it was bad, just not wrong. <laughs> okay.、Uh, get C. Get C. We'll give it to you. F get C. Five points more on the board. Staff. Function declared in standardio.h. F read. F read, show us. Two strikes. Shreyas, you have one last chance until the students, simply by getting one of the answers on the board, has a chance to steal the points. And you can all. Can,、uh, oh, can we? Can we no, you cannot. It's just you.、Okay. Just you. Is F open in standard IO? Well, you shall see. F open.、Oh, It is for 10、go. points. Back to Andy. Make or break here. Function declared in standard IO.h. F, F close. Show us F close. Very nice. Six. We have only five. We only have five answers on the board, which means the staff has won this category. Very nice. Awesome. No, it's, the, it's, not, uh, it's a lack of feature.、Oh. All right. So now let's go up for our second round. So we need Andy and what's your name? Vlad.、Oh, no, oh, no. yeah. Sorry, Bonnie. Bonnie, nice to meet you. All right, come on up to the buzzer. All right. And here we have the next question we have software used while programming. What? Literally anything. Name a piece of software you use while programming. The IDE. The CS50 IDE. <laughs> <laughs> I totally. What? What? Are you、oh, no, what、uh, <laughs> text editor. <laughs> yes. We want to give it to them? Yes, yes. Good、uh, job to staff. <laughs> Yes, c o l i t t l e by、oh, the students、yes. look really unhappy. OK, so Stelios, name a piece of software used while programming and start thinking of a way to steal this. GDB. GDB, a debugger. Very nice. For 15 more points, Frank? Terminal. A terminal window. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Software used while programming. Valgrind. Valgrind, show us. Oh. 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 The students, you just need one answer that's on the board to steal these points. 
A compiler. Show us compiler. Very nice. Back to Andy. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure. Um, Software used while programming. An operating system. An operating system. Good answer. Good answer. No. Oh. Students, there are three possible answers left on the board. What's going to be your answer? You can all decide together. Yeah, like interpreter. interpreter. An interpreter. Sure. Oh. Show us interpreter. <laughs> no, so let's go ahead and reveal now the what answers were on the board. Number four. <laughs> number five. Uh, and number six. Spotify. All right, so the points fair. stay on this side. I think we have time for one more round before cake. Let's go ahead and skip. Okay. Let's skip the next one. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, skip. Quick. Quick. Okay. We didn't want to do that to you one last time. All right. So the final question here now for Stelios. Thank you. And for who's up next? Sabrina. Sabrina. Nice to meet you. All right. So whoever hits the button first, the question is favorite problem set. I hear it over here. The students. Uh, P set zero. <laughs> Show us P set zero. Very nice for 26 points. All right, so students, uh, who's up next here? I think you're, you're up next. What's your name? Alec. Alec, nice to meet you. All right, your favorite problem set? Um, sh show me P set eight. <laughs> show me P set eight. <laughs> Yes, I will say, based on actual data from problem set eight. So P set eight was not among the top four answers in this case. What's your name? Uh, Burke. Burke, what's your favorite problem set or the top favorite problem set among all of your other classmates? Uh, encrypts or uh, P set seven. P set seven. <laughs> <laughs> so it's P set seven, number one answer from actual students. All right, what do you have for your favorite problem set? Um, mm, uh, the one with the cipher in The one with like three. Crypto. P set, P set two? Yeah. P set two! Yeah. Very nice. There's only one answer left on the board because we did the top four answers. So if, what's your name again? Bonnie. Bonnie. Bonnie, if you can tell us what the Harvard and Yale students' fourth most favorite problem set was. I feel like I have a really skewed view. Um, No, what I think everyone hated that one. Really? Really? I loved it. <laughs> Four, and what are our current totals? Okay. 166, <laughs> two. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's slightly less. My 100. But for um, 100 points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, um, no. Don't put the pressure on me. Oh, no, right there. Uh, this is one was easy. Everyone likes this right. pizza. P set one? 90 <laughs> points. <laughs> P set one? Show us P set one. Oh. Oh. Not the fourth favorite problem set. Vlad? Uh, I think, I think, I don't know what. <laughs> My favorite was with photography, but I don't know. Okay, I don't know I hear forensics. Forensics. People are saying forensics? Yeah. I hear. Forensics. Forensic, I only heard it. He said five, I heard. No, Can we ask the audience? You want, to, you want to poll the audience? Yeah, let's ask Are the audience. All, who he wants to three. be a millionaire here? He said three. It was three. Four. Three? four. Three? I hear four. I see a lot of fours. Okay. Let's go for Three or fours. Four. Three or fours. I hear three. I hear another three. Oh no. He's a, he's a TA. That, he, that Ken, get out. <laughs> I hear three. Three? Okay, overwhelming. Okay, let's just do three. Yeah. He said the three. What was three? What was yeah? Three? What was three? Okay, guys, let's the the only thing stopping us from cake. Yeah. Okay, just say P set three. P set three. Show us for the game P set three. That <laughs> That is it for CS50. We will see you for cake.